everybody, Joe Coffey here for PremierGuitar.com. We are on location in San Luis Obispo, California at the Ernie Ball Music Man Factory in headquarters where they make guitars and basses, checking out some cool stuff. This is a, a real treat for you. We've got a really rare Ernie Ball that we're going to show you, and uh, we're going to start off by showing you kind of where it came from. So uh, Dudley's with me again. Dudley, how you doing, sir? Very good. Thanks for taking us through all this stuff. Uh, well, let's begin. Uh, this looks like the Steve Morse. Yes, this is the Steve Morse model. Um, this happens to be number two of 50 Steve Morse models, and uh, so it is indeed actually the second production guitar that we made. And uh, this was done in 1986. Um, and so shortly after doing the Steve Morse model, um, we decided that we were going to design a couple other guitars, and uh, one was the guitar that currently turned into the Albert Lee. Um, at that point in time, it was called the Axis, and there was another guitar that we designed that borrows something from the Steve Morse, and it's called the Reflex. Familiar name? Yes. And... Um, Again, we had also trademarked the reflex name for this guitar, so um, when we uh, came out with our current reflex model, um, we decided we liked the name and that we wanted to use it on that new model. But this is the original reflex guitar that we did, and as you can see, uh, the body shape is very much like a Steve Morse as far as the profile goes, uh, but it's got the typical radius on the top and contours on the front and the back that you would expect from a guitar more like a silhouette. Um, and indeed, it borrowed some things from the early silhouette, the, uh, the tremolo, which was made by Schaller, and um, also the Schaller pickups in the HSH configuration. Um, the Reflex is a 22 fret version of that guitar in a sense. Um, and this one is finished in a very uh, dark gray that's kind of rich looking and a lot of people seem to like with black hardware. Very cool against the black. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you can see that um, it does indeed have the reflex name on it. <laughs> so give us an idea of how rare this is. I, I know all the EB collectors out there are going nuts watching this. Uh, how many of these exist? I would say there's probably less than 10 of these, uh, and I would, if I had to bet, I think maybe more on the order of six of these that were actually made. And uh, I, one of the people that we made these for was Jennifer Batten back in the 80s. Um, and, but they were never offered in stores. It was never a production model. They were strictly prototypes. Another thing I wanted to point out is the serial number on the instrument, which is similar to what we did on the guitars in the late 80s. Um, as you can see, it's an ink serial number. The first two digits, the 87, indicate that this guitar was made in 1987, and the 097 means it's the 97th instrument that we made that year. Uh, this serial number scheme was dropped around 1990 when we um, started serializing all of the instruments on the uh, neck plates. But uh, this is an interesting little um, piece from that era where we actually did the serial numbers on the back of the headstock. So Dudley, when people uh, you know have these rare finds and questions and photos, and they call up trying to say, "Well, I, I can't track this down. What should I know?" You're probably the guy who ends up with that phone call. Uh, many times, yes. <laughs> you yeah. probably had some real uh, gems show up that way. Yeah, it, you know, you you think that you're pretty consistent, but every once in a while something comes up that is was only done for a short period of time, and um, sometimes even I have to go back and try to research and figure out, you know, when did we do this and why did we do that? And so, Very cool. Well, Dudley, thanks right so much for yeah, taking us through this rare makes, piece. It's all part of what makes the, the job more fun. So. Awesome. I'm Joe Coffey. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.